welcome to our special guests who have come from the Center of Freedom to lead us to this journey for Easter. But before we get into the program, I have a few uh, announcements, uh, customary announcements about the events that are coming up during the week. Now, I'm going to, uh, uh, before I hand it off to uh, Nikhil, who's going to welcome and introduce uh, our guests for today, uh, for the Easter program. And uh, it's, I, you know, it's, I think I'm very sure I'm speaking on behalf of the entire center. Uh, with a lot of fondness, we remember Linda Gallagher in the Center of Freedom, who have been part of uh, the journey with us for several events, Christmas and uh, Easter. And I've learned a lot of songs myself uh, uh, from Linda. And, uh, and many of us in the center here have joined her in, uh, in the Christmas choir and, uh, and Easter programs and all that. So this is something that has been in the waiting for a long time and uh, Swami has blessed us today uh, with this very special program. And um, also this week uh, uh, in, uh, is also, as you all know, it's a relatively tough week out there in the world. And so, and at this moment, uh, as we go through the prayers, it's uh, also important for us to pray to Swami and to send our love, our prayers and compassion uh, to the world as we go through the prayers today. Um, so I'm going to hand it over to Nikhil, who's going to introduce uh, Linda Gallagher and the Center of Freedom. Linda is a published author, inspirational singer, teacher, and addiction counselor with many musical albums produced to date. Much of her music has been circulated worldwide in various spiritual centers. Linda came to know of Satya Sai Baba in 1983 when she and her late husband happened to watch The Lost Years of Jesus on television. This documentary showed clearly that a Christ presence was alive and well in India. In that one moment, Linda felt that she must go and be in the audience of this great soul. She came to know more about Swami through reading Joy Thomas in 1988. Being led to Baba created a major transformation and realization which has led to healing in body, mind, and soul. To date, Linda has traveled to India to visit Sai Baba many times, the first in 1991 and the last in 2009 at Christmas. She credits her relationship with him and the clarity of his teachings that have caused a major shift in how she lives in the world. Music is a wonder that really connects us all, and we kindly welcome Linda and the group for today's performance. Thank you. It's a joy and a huge grace to be called into the presence of Sai family. We thank the Lord for this opportunity for us to come together as two or more gathering together in his name, in his love and his care. We are deeply blessed to have been called to this opportunity to awaken in this lifetime. Because in truth, we are in this lifetime to be able to acknowledge that the I in the midst of us indeed is that Christ, that side presence. And so let us sing today, open our hearts, and allow his great love and care to be like a, uh, oh, like that, <laughs> an inoculation one more time of true commitment, faith, and devotion. Siron. Let us start and open with God, the remover of obstacles, Ganesh. Call and response.
Swami calls us to open our hearts. It's all the language of the heart. So let us begin together along with Ganesha's trail of light and love. And be willing to just simply sit up straight. Let that energy, the Shakti, move through as we open to the beloved indweller.
of the heart. We want the eyes of our heart to be open. We call it less thinkathon, more heart.
Have you seen Jesus? <laughs> you know, Mother Teresa, she was asked, how can you do what you do? How do you do this with all these indigents and people that are dying? They're living in the streets. What is it about you that allows you to serve so easily? She simply said, I just see Jesus. Have you seen Oh uh -huh. 
So my last trip to India, 2009, second Christmas, started in 1991, first Christmas, many times going to Prashanti Nalayam, White Field, and Kodikana. Wow. And what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. So the last trip, Christmas, hundred, a thousand choir people, a thousand people in the choir, and 65 musicians. It was amazing. It was like I knew that if I were lifted out of the body and the bag of flesh fell on the ground, it was, oh my God, I was born for this. Being with Swami and receiving. You know, you don't have any words to talk about it other than to say, oh, praise be. But here's something. I wrote Swami a letter and also sent him a telegram. I think it cost $40. It was in the late 80s. I just had to get a, I had to get a hold of him. So I tried it on the outer. I was definitely doing it on the inner. And I sent him this letter and I said, because I had, I had seen that documentary of the lost years of Jesus that just really was a bee sting. It inoculated me. It said, in time, in time, you will go. So I wrote him this letter and I said, Lord, if it is the will of the one can I come and be in the crowd? You see, that was, that was the message that my late husband and I would sing about. You know, crawling all the way to the river to be there at the Jordan River in the crowd, watching this amazing happening with this soul, this Jesus Christ soul. So I said, okay, if it's the will of the one, can I come and be in the crowd? And can I sing for you? And can I touch your garment? So when, after this song, and I, remind me if I forget, but I want to share this story because it's one of those delicious acknowledgments of divine light and holy presence. So this, I offer myself to these songs that we're going to sing together was laid on my heart way before I ever maybe even heard of Sai Baba. And it was a reconciliation song. It's like all the debris that's on your heart, I'm handing it over to you. And this little song came. So when I came to India the first time, I was asked to lead the International Choir with this song. And I had written that letter. No, I asked if I could sing for you. And so this song went everywhere. And so the last trip to be with Swami in 2009, Brother Charles from Africa was giving a Catholic Mass. And there were hundreds and hundreds of devotees. And at some point in the service, they all started singing. I offer myself to Yeah.
What? Story? Yes, the story. <laughs> but first, if you have enough love in your heart, you can overcome everything. Love will conquer all your ills. Love will heal your wounds. Love will cleanse your stains. Love will bring you peace. We do our best work when we have the least amount of concern for ourselves, for our good fortune or our ill fortune. All pain and hardship comes from selfishness, from lack of love. We create the web of self that binds us. We cannot love without bringing greater love and joy into our own life. Love is always a miracle. It breaks down all barriers. It's not by harshness that we can subdue <coughs> harshness. It is by manifesting that which will make others feel the gentle, ever-present, tender power abiding in our heart. On rare occasions, since this is the celebration of eternal life today, and every day, actually, there is a unique individual once in a while that comes along. We know that with Bhagavan Sri Satya Sai Baba. Today we're celebrating that awareness that this great light, the Christ, penetrated the consciousness of the one called Jesus. When that happens, it's a heaven sent happening and it has a message for all who have the ears to hear, the eyes to see, who actually want to listen. So this one will say something like this to us. Listen, I have good news for you. You have every reason to be cheerful and confident. For the mysteries of life can be solved. But first, you must admit that your days are filled with painful puzzles. You must face the wreckage that surrounds you while knowing fully that you of yourself don't have the answers. Don't fear that fact. Don't be ashamed of it. It's okay to say, I don't know. Your shame indicates your vanity's belief that you, of yourself, humanly, must create the solution, which is all wrong. You need only have the courage to remain without your answer. For that humility is what attracts the real answer to you. See the storm of your life? Enter it without asking what will happen to me or you. Pass through the storm, for on the other side is everything for which your heart deeply yearns, the longing of your true self. Come, I will personally guide you through the storm until you reach the safety of the other side. Thou art the life within me, O Christ, thou King of kings. Thou art thyself the answer to all my questionings. When we walk with Jesus and put on his sandals, we discover that his walk is a life story, a love story. 
Think about it. When someone gives up their life for a friend, but not thinking of the self, the little ego, that's the greatest love of all. Easter is a love story. The life of Christ Jesus is simply all about love and compassion, truth and service, sacrifice of the unreal, the belief in separation or duality. His life was all about oneness. I and the Father are one. Life is eternal. The life of the spirit of the living God is embedded in the midst of all life. Jesus came to show us the way to step beyond the movie of the mind. That by going within to the kingdom and its principles of truth, that all that is necessary for the fulfillment of life shall be made manifest. He declared, I am. Come, that you might have life abundant. I am come, that you might have life abundant. I am. Come, cast your burdens upon me. Then you will know true relief and release. In reading over the last number of weeks and contemplating today, Easter, we've had many Easter celebrations at our center over the years, but all of us, we come from different walks of life, but so many of us have been celebrating this since we were tiny. And it was about, mm -hmm, it was about Christ, and it was about the cross, and then it was about the rising, but we didn't really understand it very much until we began to wake up. And that's what we're doing here today. Vivekananda says, arise, awake, freedom is at hand. Arise, awake, and stop not till the goal is reached. You know how it is, all of us, how there are times when we call them pop quizzes. Am I going to turn away from the light, be sad and sorry? You know it's not easy, but are we going to step up and stand up and be the light that is indwelling? Here's a story Jesus said. A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when he fell into the hands of robbers. They stripped him of his clothes. They beat him. Let's see. They stripped him of his clothes. They beat him and went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road. He saw the man. Mm -mm. He passed on the other side. So, too, a religious leader, when he came to the place and saw him, he passed by on the other side. But then there was this man. He was called the Samaritan. And Samaritans and Jews did not connect very well. However, he came to the man. He lifted him. He took pity on him. And he went, bandaged his wounds, took him to an end, and took care of him. Jesus said, now you go and do likewise. Swami says to us, in the Bible, it is recorded that Jesus washed the feet of his disciples. It's called Monday, Thursday. When they asked him why he was doing this, Jesus answered, I am washing your feet as your servant so that you may learn to serve the world. Every individual, to begin with, is a messenger of God. When they fulfill their duties as a messenger, they realize that they are God's own child. And then they achieve union with, the, with the, his, their maker. God's love is boundless and universal. It's not like human love. 
which is narrow. It's very selfish. God promotes love in everyone by his love and through his love. Swami's love is beyond reason, as was Christ Jesus. It's unlimited. It's unchanging. Those of you who have been nourished, nourished by divine love should not deprive yourself of its beneficence. I do not seek anything, says Swami. I impose no hardships. If you understand the real nature of my love and utilize that love to transform yourself into an embodiment of love, you will become an example for the world. Christ in you, Sai in us, is the hope of glory. It's not some presence external to ourself, but it is the very one within ourself. And it declares, I am. I can, because I am. I have a story to tell. OK, March. So I wrote that letter. I told you I wrote a letter and sent a telegram. I don't know if anybody ever did that. Probably. I'm not the only one. In that letter, besides asking Swami if I could sing, play the guitar for him, I asked if I could touch his garment. Why would I ask that? Well, for many, many years, there's a story in scripture of a woman. I really related to the story of this woman because of my own challenges in waking up, being lost and waking up. The woman had many, many diseases. She went to doctors, she went to all kinds of individuals to help her heal and nothing, nothing of wholeness was revisited to her. So she gave up, totally. That's it, I'm done. So one day, her cousin came running into her little house saying, sister, sister, you've got to come with me. There is this one who, don't tell me anymore, don't tell me anymore. I don't want to hear about it. I've had it. I'm not going anywhere else. Nothing will help me. So the cousin pleaded with her, please, you must, must come with me. This is different. It's not like all the others. So she surrendered and barely could walk out of her little house. But she got there with her cousin. And they met with hundreds upon hundreds of people on the mount. And while she sat in the crowd, she felt something very different. She felt, oh my God. Kind of like how I felt when I came to Swami. Oh my God. Oh my God. I have got to be able to get close to this soul. I want to touch him. I just feel if I can touch him, I'll be healed. That's all. So she left after the meeting of all the people, and she went back to her little house and made a decision. I'm going to get up really early in the middle of the night, even if I have to crawl on the road to get there. I am going to get there, and I'm going to somehow touch his garment. So there we are. We see the scene. The only thing is, is there were a lot of other people who had the same idea. <laughs> they were up in the middle of the night too. Because they wanted to get close to this great energy. What is this? So you can see this. This is kind of like a, a Hollywood movie. You can see the scene. Here she's crawling. Many legs, many toes. And you're kind of like, oh my God. It's like being at Swami's birthday. You know what I mean? 
I mean, it's like, oh my God, getting through the crowd. And she was getting through the crowd, and at a particular moment, she's able to reach out, and she grabs that garment for two seconds, whoosh, and all of a sudden, Jesus stops and says, who touched me? What? You can imagine, she just, you know, falling back. Oh my God, I did something wrong. I shouldn't have done that. And his disciples are saying, Master, Master, you're being crowded upon you, all over you, everybody's around. No. Who touched me? So you can see the crowd going like this. It's splitting like this. And Jesus is looking over there at this woman who's on the ground. She's got her veil up around her. Oh my God. Oh my God. Here he comes. Oh my God. Daughter, get up. Your faith has made you whole. Why did I write that in the letter? For years I was on platforms giving that story. I'm that woman. I tried everything to be healed, and nothing worked. So with this grand, glorious blessing to go be with Sai Baba that first Christmas, I was asked to be the lead guitar for the International Choir. So I was in the front row. There we are. Christmas Day, the big sharing of the music, Swami, he's right in front of me. Quite a distance, right in front of me, chair all by himself, all of the devotees, thousands of people were singing Western songs, Christmas songs. I'm sitting next to the choir director, and the next thing you know, we're finished. Here comes Swami walking towards us, and all of a sudden, she grabs me and says, come. Oh my God, what are we doing? You know, and of course, the crowds and everybody. And so we're just running over to Swami's feet. That's where I was led. And she's putting her hands on his feet. And my hands are jumping up and down on his feet. And I don't know what this is about. He knows. And so I stay there as long as she does. It seemed like a whole lifetime. And the next thing we know, she gets up, I get up, we go running back to our places, and a voice says, the garment. I turn around, go running back, grab a hold of his garment, and go running back to my place. So what I haven't told you is I had had three automobile accidents and a motorcycle accident. And for 20 years, suffered so much pain in my spine. Nothing would make it go away. Until Sancha Sai Baba pierced my heart. And that day was the beginning of a whole new journey of walking in the sandals of this Christ light. For Swami was my Christ. Because I had lived all those lives, uh, I mean in this lifetime, of Jesus. All girls Catholic school for 12 years, you know, Holy Communion. Even though at a certain point I turned away from all of it. But I was brought back and I was brought to that Christ light in the form of Bhagavan Sri Satya Sai Baba. So from that moment on, the miracles of love and light and falling and getting up and falling and getting up and following this trail of come, I am come, I am eternal life. That's the Jesus story. That's the Sai story. So something did take place over time I went to India many, many times. Is it okay that I tell these stories? Okay? Okay. So, 
Many times when I was in India, I would become very, very ill. When we talk about it and say cleansing, 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 cleansing. But it started way before I ever went to India. And over five years ago, actually about seven years ago, it was the Thursday after Swami transition. Thursday. We did a big celebration at our center, a memorial for Sancha Sai Baba. Devotees from the Sacramento Center came down. Shaker and lots of people came down. We had a big, beautiful time together. And I had played the guitar for many, many years, as some of you know, because I played it here in uh, the, the things that we did. And uh, I had to put the guitar down early that night because I had had so much pain in my arm for a long time. And was finally told that you can't play the guitar anymore. It was like, oh, okay. Now what, Lord? And I heard, you're going to have to learn to play a keyboard. Oh, really? Okay. And he showed me, in my mind, to simply see the guitar. Now go find it on the keyboard. And he told me that I had to practice every day. As uh, Vince Lombardi would say, perfect practice makes perfect. Not practice makes perfect. Perfect practice makes perfect. So I became a practitioner a few years before the next episode happened. So I want to share this with you because this was, I would say, you know how we say, that is the greatest thing that ever happened to me. It didn't look so great while it was happening, but after it was over, you could see God was right there in the midst of it the whole time, walking me through this, saying strength to endure, strength to endure, self-confidence. Swami has given me that message. Strength to endure. I am the strength to endure whatever is on your plate. Have confidence in that self in the midst of you. So, I had a seizure. I was out of town. And I had worked in detox for a few years, many years ago. And I knew what a seizure was like, and this was one of them. And when I came back from being out of town, I decided to go to the doctor. I always thought this was hypoglycemia, these attacks that I was having. Because at 30 years of age, I was told that is hypoglycemia, and therefore, if you drink carrot juice or blah, 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 this is what goes on. So I would always say, okay, it's just hypoglycemia. It was pretty severe. And the next thing you know is I'm being rushed and thrown into a little wheelchair in the emergency and I'm told, uh, Ms. Gallagher, you have a very large brain tumor. You have to be operated on immediately. That was in 2014. So when they, I got taken down within a matter of an hour to Redwood City, it was over Martin Luther King weekend. They told me this is the only doctor, neurosurgeon, that can do this operation. You must go see her now. She told me, we don't know. We don't know if you're going to go all the way through, if you're going to come back and have all these things that are going on. We just know that we have to get you under. So, because the brain was so swollen, they had to wait for five days, or it was a week, in order for the brain to come down. The night before, 60 people came to the center. We prayed, we laughed, some people cried, and we sang. We sang to the glory. We knew that all is well in his love and care. He's always there. This is another pop quiz. How are you going to stand in it? Are you going to trust him? Whatever. So I took my Gayatri with me at the center for 
21 years, we have the dioptery going 24 and 7. It's in two different places in the center. We're never without that Gayatri that we sang with you all today. And so, before they put me under, I hear him say, prove me, put me to the test. Let me show you what I am. I've never known such love and care in my whole life. It didn't matter. I said, Lord, this is your life. You do with your life what you shall. I know whatever. You will use it for your glory. Whether I slip all the way through the veil, whether I come back with something, it doesn't matter, because you'll use it. That's why you made this form, that you might be glorified. So through the seven-hour operation, there were six people from our center in the cafeteria. Every hour on the hour, they would chant the Gayatri, praying through the seven hours. Beautiful. And I wake up, and one of my sisters around the bed said to me later, you know the first thing that you said? No, I am God. Really? what was said through you. A month later, went to see the neurosurgeon. It's all plates and screws over here. You know, it's like I, I'm being screwed, you know, tighter. The neurosurgeon says to me, quote, unquote, you have been saved. He has more for you to do. He even used my hands. Om Shri Sai Ram, Jay Sai Ram. So, for us to be a call to be with all of you today, you don't know how uh, glorious that is. You, maybe you do. In our, you know, whenever we're called to gather together, I know it is Swami's finger pointing the way. He's doing something in each of us for his glory. It's all about the glory. It is not about us singularly, but it's the way we say it in the my growing up faith is we're all cells in the body of Christ. We're cells in the body of Christ. We are his light pushing to be birthed to be resurrected, to rise into awareness so that, just like in the 24-7, I don't mean the 24-7, the 9-11. You know, I heard this story that the upset with devotees about, oh my God, the terror, the terrorists. And Swami say, get your eyes off the world. Take your attention off the world and clean up the terror and the terrorism in your own heart. Then the world will change. I heard him say that to me. You know? It's like my job and our job is to be a transparency of his perfect love and care. He showed that to me five years ago. That his love and care is ever present. We're not lacking in anything. We may not have the things that the ego still tempts us to desire. But he says, give it all to me. I will give you what is best. I alone am the best. And you know that. We know that. So I have one other thing, because I, oh, I know I'm going to be, we're almost there, right? OK, I want to tell you, this is a great story, quickly. So second trip coming back from India, I go over to the Sai Center over in uh, near Vallejo. I forget. That was Krishna and uh, Krishna. the Reddies, the Reddies, okay? Krishna. And I was going there all the time. And I called and I said, because I was really confused, and, and here I am, my second trip, and it was quite a trip. You know, it wasn't the big, ah, birthday party, the first trip, it was a, wow, that was quite a trip. And so I said, can I come and go up in your center? Of course, of course, for Suna, right? 
Prasuna. And uh, so I get up there, and I'm ticked off. I'm feeling ticked off. And I'm looking at that big picture. And I'm saying, prove your omnipresence. I just got to know, is this the real deal? So I touched the little gold sandals. You know, there were some gold sandals, and there was a lingo. I didn't know anything about any of this. And I'm just kind of touching the stuff. <laughs> and I go back to the center, and there's a phone call, a message. And it's from this wonderful woman, Liz. And she says, you must call my husband. He's in the hospital, and he has a failed operation. And I really want you to talk to him. Would you do that? OK. So I got the phone number. And I get really quiet, and I say, Lord, I don't have any idea. And I hear nothing but make the phone call. Art, this is Linda G. Hi, Linda. I said, I know you're in the hospital right now, but I'd like you to just listen to what I be told to tell you. OK, he says. I said, I want you to close your eyes, and I want you to imagine or think that there is light within you. And within your doctor. And I want you to inhale the word sigh, and I want you to exhale the word wrong. So you get that? Inhale sigh, and exhale wrong. Would you do that? I'll explain it to you later. Would you just do it? Yes, I will do that. I will do that. So before I made the phone call, the doctor had just been in there looking at this failed operation that was totally failed. Had to do with the eye. So they come in, and Art is in the bed, and he's inhaling sigh, and he's exhaling rum. They wheel him down the corridor into the surgery, and he and is, they're wheeling him down. He's saying, Doc, something's going on in my eye. <sighs> Something weird is happening in my eye. He gets him into the surgery, and the doctor comes to him and looks in his eye, and he goes, well, I'll be there. He says, the thing has totally healed itself. Go back to your room, put on your clothes, and get out of here. <laughs> Jay Saira, prove your omnipresence. Well, I know I'm getting the, the wand that we, I know we could sit here and share our stories with each other because it's wonderful satsang to feel that energy that has been, that's ignited our hearts. Isn't that true? I mean, we're here because he's inoculated us with his love and his purpose. I know that my life, and if my life is his purpose, then your life is his purpose. Because he's calling us home. He is the resurrection. He is the life. And as we totally trust in him, the truth will never experience death. As we trust in his way, we will never ever stray. Let us sing that.
Swami's passing. Four days later, this video came through the heart, and here it is. See God in each other.
melodious and yet meditative music that takes you beyond love, devotion and even surrender. And an extraordinary message that you have given which is love is where the selfish is Selfishness is not. So very true. I cannot describe in words on behalf of all of us the gratitude that we have expressed and we do express from the depths of our heart for you to come down all the way and take us through this journey while keeping us every second of the time in the now. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you very much, Saira.
Oh. Uh-huh. 
depend on others. You may be very wealthy and have servants and assistants to help you in a few tasks, but your own work you must do yourself. If you wish to be of service to society, serve yourself first. One who will not serve society has no right to belong to a Shri Satisai organization. Satisai Baba. Thought for the weak. In the pursuit of the good and godly life, one may encounter many difficulties and disturbances. Those who hate others will ultimately be consumed by their own hatred. Many doubts and questions will crop up. It is only when all difficulties are faced squarely and the troubles are borne with patience and fortitude that we can understand the true nature of reality. The transforming power of love is boundless. Saint Paul, who was originally inveterate critic of Jesus, was transformed by Christ's love into the greatest apostle of Jesus. Pure love will never submit to the forces of envy or hatred, however powerful they may be. Selfless love will prevail over them for sure. You should not allow yourself to be overwhelmed in any way by difficulties and sorrows, doubts and disappointments. You must have faith, have confidence in yourself and strive to understand well the nature of God's love. To secure that, love is the sacred goal of human life. Divine Discourse, December 25th. Baba.